Welcome to the first lecture of the second method section of the Industrial Ecology Open Online course. Today we will learn about how models for material flow analysis systems can be built and how they can be solved. We will in particular learn about the manual solution of system equations, the matrix equation formalism and the numerical system solution. Before we start a short recap, we learned earlier on that in material and energy flow analysis, the system that we want to study is modeled in form of processes that can contain stocks and that are connected by flows. There is always a system boundary which tells us what is inside our scope and what is outside. Each of the flows, the stocks and the stock changes is a system variable for which we have a symbol, for example F001 for a flow coming from outside into process one. And the question is now, how can we make a mathematical model that we can use the information that we have to solve for other system variables whose values we would like to know. Before we start, we also need to distinguish between stationary and dynamic MFA system. In a stationary MFA system, we can say that a one year snapshot that we have is representative for all years of the system. It's always the same. And this is the case if all flows and stocks are constant over time, or if all flows are constant and all the stocks are outside our system boundary so that we don't care about them. So if you have a one year snapshot of a system, like a material cycle with a constant stock or an input output tables, all these are typically typical examples of stationary MFA systems. In a dynamic MFA system, at least two system variables need to change over time. If one only changes, there's also at least one other one that also needs to change because of the mass balance. So here, in this lecture, we only deal with stationary MFA systems where all flows and stocks are constant. And to introduce our methods, we will use an example created by Daniel Müller at NTNU Trondheim, which is a very simple system with a production process and a consumption process. And we have a given problem that we say in the system that you can see here in the picture, the recycling rate is expected to increase by 10%. And the question is, given that domestic shipments remain equal, how does the material demand change if the recycling rate changes? So if this flow here stays constant and the recycling rate changes by 10%, this is some factor in the system. The question is, what is the impact on the raw material demand? And just from looking at the system, it's not clear what the answer could be, because first, recycling rate isn't properly defined, and second, this system has a feedback loop, and this feedback loop says maybe the system scaling is not exactly linear, so we need to have a more systematic, we need to have a mathematic approach to understanding and solving the system. This is what we're going to do now. In the first step of the system solution, we will name all processes, all system variables, and we will actually define what we mean by the recycling rate. So in this figure here, that was also created by Daniel Müller, you can see that each flow each stock change and each stock have a symbol and we will use those symbols in our subsequent calculations. We also have specified what we mean by the recycling rate. The recycling rate, which we denote by alpha, is defined as F21 divided by F12. It is the flow that goes back from consumption to production divided by the flow that goes from production to consumption. In the second step, we will count the items of information we have in our system and quantify what we already know and how much additional information we need. In our system, we have eight system variables. We have four flows, we have two stock changes and two stocks. Because we have two processes, there's two mass balance equations, which give us two constraints. That means out of these eight pieces of information here, eight system variables, we need only to quantify six of them. We need six independent pieces of information to quantify the system. 
because the two other pieces of information are given to us by the mass balance equations. In the third step, we need to gather the information that is needed to solve the system, and we also need to make simplifications in those cases where this is appropriate. In a stationary model, this is what we want to deal with here, we can drop the stocks. We assume that everything is running constantly over time, so there's no changes in inventories and no changes of the changes in inventory, so the stock changes. We can assume that the stock changes are zero, so we have a stationary system, no accumulation, and also we can leave the stocks outside the system boundary. So just by this simplification of using a stationary system, we got rid of four different system variables that we actually don't need for our assessment. That leaves us with two pieces of information that we need. One of these pieces is the actual inflow to the system. So this is the flow F01. We will take this flow as given. We call this flow D. D is a parameter, one piece of information that we assume is given. And the other information piece that we assume is given is the recycling rate that we defined earlier on, where we can write that F21 equals alpha times F12. We needed six pieces of information and now we have six. We assume that four system rivals are zero, we don't care about them, and we have the external input D, and we have the recycling rate alpha that makes two parameters, that is all we need to solve the system. In the fourth step of our manual system solution, we formulate the system's equation. And we have two types of system's equations. The first one are equations that link the model parameters to the system variables. For example, a very basic equation that we can say the flow from 0 to 1, the incoming flow here, equals D. That is one equation. The other equation here is the definition equation of the recycling rate alpha that we can write in this manner shown here. We have the two equations for the stock changes that we don't consider, additional two equations, and we have the mass balancing equation here. That is five equations in total. So we can now use those equations and trying to resolve the system of equations for the different system variables. Since the system here is not too complicated, there's only six variables that are left to quantify, we can try to do this by hand and we will see this is not so difficult. The first thing we can do here is we drop the stock changes from the mass balancing equations because we assume that it's zero anyway, so we just drop it. We can take the mass balancing equation and substitute the parameters we have, in particular the parameter alpha, and the parameter d for the incoming flow. If we do that, we can actually take the mass balancing equation and solve them for the flow F12 and F20 in the way it's written down here. You can just focus on the slides, pause the lecture, and try to recapitulate what's going on here. So when you substitute d in here, you get a system that we can resolve for F12, which would be D over 1 minus alpha, and F20, which equals D. You can take this information and put it back into the mass balancing equation to resolve for the other system variables. This way you would obtain F21, which here is alpha divided by 1 minus alpha times D. This is the system solution, just solving equations step by step. It's always good to do a reality check to check whether your system solution makes sense at all. For example, in this system, as we don't consider stocks here and there, the total inflow to the system must equal the total outflow. So F20 must equal D, and this is exactly what we found. So this is good. We can write down the list of equations and solutions for the final model solution. So here you see each of the six remaining system variables as an equation of the parameters. One flow is D, 
one other flow is a function of d and alpha, the stock changes are zero. So on the left side here you have only system rivals and on the right side you have only parameters or zero. Six system rivals on the left equal to six function of the model parameters on the right. In practice many MFA systems are simple enough that we can proceed and calculate the solution by hand. So this is quite a nice way of approaching the formalities of the system. There are, however, cases where you have so many parameters in system rivals that a manual solution is not handy anymore. In this case, it is a good idea to switch to the matrix approach. Matrix approach means we take the system rivals that we have here and write them as a matrix equation. The way this works is that we first define a big x vector comprising all the system rivals that we need, the four flows of the system and the two stock changes. We then define a matrix of coefficients so that this matrix multiplied by the vector of system rivals x gives us a set of exogenous constraints. These could be parameters like d or alpha or just zeros in case where we know this is zero. So let's see how it looks for our system. Here we have a vector y of inhomogeneities. We have a matrix A of coefficients multiplied with the x vector. So we can see, for example, the first line of the matrix equation says zero is this line of the matrix scalar product with that column of the x vector. So it says 1 times delta s1 equals 0. This is just the piece of information we have. The same here, 1 times delta s2 equals 0. The equations down here with the 1s and minus 1s only are the mass balancing equations. They are also coded here. The equation in the fourth line is the definition equation for alpha, rewritten in matrix format. And the third line, you can read that d equals 1 times f01. This is just a constraint for this flow f01. The matrix method is in the first step just a fancy way of rewriting your system's equation to put them all into the structure of a matrix equation. If your system is well defined, you can simply take your matrix A of coefficients and invert it. And by the inverse matrix, you can also get the inverse matrix equation, meaning you can take the x and solve for x by multiplying the inverse of A from the left to your inhomogeneity vector y. You can do this, for example, in Excel using Excel's m inverse functions, m m mult functions for matrix multiplication. So you can put in the numbers here for alpha and d, program it into Excel, and then use those functions to directly generate the result. You can also use programs like MATLAB or Maple, or I think to some extent also Python can do that, to make a symbolic inverse of this matrix A and get the actual matrix inverse in terms of the symbols d and alpha and ones and so on, but we don't show this here. Here I also only give you the advice of trying to make this matrix inversion in Excel using these two functions. With that we can already close our lecture. There's a few things to remember as take-home messages. The first thing is that it's important to understand that the system definition that you write down dictates what mass balance equation holds. So the flows and the way they are connected to the processes tell you what mass balance equations are present in your system. You can also say that the system definition is coded in the balancing equations. So each balancing equation tells you what comes into the process and what goes out. And if you take the mass balance equation for each process, you can, from those equations, reconstruct the graphical system definition. 
system definition and mass balancing equation contain the same information. They are equivalent to each other. Flows of material and energy are always connected between, so that they, sorry, flows always connect two processes. They always come from one process and go to one process. Or these flows can cross the system boundary. They come from outside, from the environment of the system, and they enter the system and end into in a particular process. Or they leave a particular process and go to the environment of the system. Another important feature of material and energy flow analysis is the lack of established model equations. If you compare it, for example, with life cycle assessment or input-output analysis, you have a specific model equation, namely the Leontief I.O. model, that tells you how your data are organized and what the actual model equation is and the system definition is. In MFA, we have more freedom. There is no established set, no predefined set of model equations and you can do whatever is needed to tackle your problem as long as you respect the mass balances. If your system is too complicated that you can do a solution by hand, you can revert to the matrix method, meaning you can program your linear equation system into the matrix formalism that then can give you a formal solution without that you have to do all those things by hand. And last, another hint to the stand software that helps you to define MFA systems and to quantify them. In case you want to try out some of these methods in practice, STAN is one tool that can help you organize your data. But you will have to do the system solution by yourself. So STAN is not a software to do system solutions like the matrix approach or the parameter approach, but instead it is a software to rather organize the data and it can use then the results of the STAN software to also check your analytical system solutions. With that, I want to close this lecture.